Now you see why I call this man a mediocre and I call him a clown. Because to me, the man is a clown. Now in between all these things, this man swore that if he does not get a he will resign. And up to now, the man is yet to resign. Welcome to my channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Over here, we'll bring you the news on entertainment, sports, international and local news. Let's continue the video. All right, um, so this man on my screen, his name is um, Olani Pekun Olikoyede. Um, he's the current EFCC chairman. Not just that, he's a symbol of mediocrity. He's a symbol of incompetence. Generally, me, I call him a clown, right? I call him a clown because he's a very funny character. Now, I understand. I'm very, very certain that I will see this video. Now, why do I call him a clown? Which he is. On the 18th of April, 2024, on the 18th of April, what month are we in now? We are in November. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Uh, November, that's like seven months ago. On the 18th of November, of April, rather, he posted, Governor Yaya Bello wanted by the EFCC, former Kogi State Governor. Yaya Bello is wanted by the EFCC. On that same 18th of April 2024, he posted 80.2 billion Naira money laundry, Yaya Bello access stalls arraignment. Then on the 24th of April 2024, they posted alleged 80.2 billion Naira fraud, ESCC sells Yaya Bello his charges. Then on the 10th of May, because nothing happened in April. On the 10th of May, the following month, they posted 80.2 billion Naira alleged fraud. Courts insist on Yaya Bello's appearance for arraignment. Then on the 14th of June, they posted alleged 80.2 billion Naira money laundering, money laundry. Court sheets Yaya Bello's arraignment to June 27th. Then, because it didn't happen on the 27th, EFCC posted alleged 80.2 billion naira fraud. EFCC raises contempt charges against Aya Bello's counsel. Then, 18th of July, apparently nothing happened in May, June. Now we are in July. 18th of July, EFCC posted alleged 80.2 billion naira fraud. Court crashes Yaya Bello's move against arraignment. On the 20th of August, ESCC posted, Court of Appeal orders Yaya Bello to show up for arraignment. On the 18th of September, they posted, Yaya Bello not in ESCC custody. On the 26th of September, they posted, ESCC tackles Yaya Bello non-appearance in court for arraignment. On the 26th, they still posted, Yaya Bello must have his day in court. On the 27th of September, they posted alleged 3 billion Naira fraud, how money flowed from Kogi State government to my account. That's on Yaya Bello again. On the 4th of October, they posted 110.4 billion Naira fraud, court orders Yaya Bello to appear for arraignment. Now, um, after then, we didn't hear anything about Yaya Bello again. So as you can see, since April that they announced this Yaya Bello's case that it was wanted, it has been story upon story upon story. Now, in between all these things, these people have been able to arraign more than 100 people, which includes this on the 6th of November, court jails businessman for 1.1 million Naira fraud in Meduguri jail straight. On the 7th of November, court jails internet fraud star for 12 million Naira fraud in Meduguri. On the 7th of November again, court jails two or two for operating BDC without license in Damatu. On the 8th of November, EFCC presents second witness against couples alleged 2.7 billion Naira fraud. They are these, these couples are in their custody. On the 8th of November again, they posted Justice A. Ishaka of Kogi High, High, High Court has convicted and sentenced Yusuf Umar Salisu to prison for fraud. 
On the 8th of November again, <laughs> Kaduna called James 7 for fraud. On the 10th of November, called James 7 internet fraudster in Benin City. Then four days ago, yeah, yeah, ESCC arranged man for alleged 7.6 million dollars and 7.6 million naira and 31,000 euros visa scam in Lagos. Four days ago, Calabar and Uyo jails four internet fraudsters. Four days ago, ESCC grills three suspect oil, blah, blah, blah. Three days ago, ESCC, no. Uh, three days ago, alleged 28.2 million naira fraud. Cop court denies fake nurse bail. Then on the 9th of November, uh, Lagos court jails one man for one year for fraudulent documents and blah, blah, blah. Now, in between all this, you have a thing, which he has been alleged that um, he took over 100, 100 um, billion naira from the Nigerian government. And since then, it has been this or this or that. And in between all these things, they have arrested more than 100 people, and those 100 people have been jailed. All those people that they've arrested, if you calculate all their money since Yaya Bello was announced in April, it not reach 110 billion naira. Now, you see why I call this man a mediocre, and I call him a clown. Because to me, the man is a clown. Now, in between all these things, this man swore that if he does not get Yaya Bello, he will resign. And up to now, the man is yet to resign. The truth is that you people are very, very lucky that um, the youth in this country, that we are very, any small thing will just distract us. Normally, normally, down in my office, you are not supposed to get peace. Because your power is usually on the youth. Do you understand? So how are we going to correct corruption in Nigeria when the people that are deep into this corruption cannot be held accountable for their crimes? Meanwhile, the petty people are being carried on a daily. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. This, we were expecting that when you hold somebody like Yaya Bilo, you will discourage a lot of these politicians from taking our money in Nigeria. But of course, you cannot do it because of what? Because you are a clown, not just a clown, you are the face of mediocrity in the whole of Africa. And to be very honest, I am really, really surprised that you have not, you are yet to resign, not just that. I am really, really surprised that you still hold that office because you are incompetent. But anyways, we'll keep on watching. My own is just to talk. And the day, there was one, the one day you people will push the youth of this country and they will act, and that acting, would be very very crazy and you are gonna learn that day and you all will learn the hard way don't play face is there it's before court go and check it apply for our processes please you will get some of these particulars of offense there move money directly from government to bring the change you see to pay the the um, child school fee in advance in advance dollars how many how much 71 in dollars, yes, in dollars. I think seventy two thousand dollars. What are you about? Seven hundred twenty thousand dollars. Sorry, seven twenty thousand in advance. In that dream that he was going to leave, government house. In a poor state like Kogi, and you want me to close my eyes to that, under the guise of say I'm, I'm being used, used by who at this stage of my life? Used by who? By who? For crying out loud. I assumed office here. I didn't, I didn't initiate the case. I inherited the case file. I called for the case file. I called for the report. And I said, look, there are issues here. Do you know on my own, on my honor, I put a call across to him, which ordinarily I'm not supposed to do, just to honor him as a governor, as a past, immediate past governor. Sir, there are issues. I've seen this case file. Can you just come? Let, me, let us clarify these issues. I'm under camera. He said, ah, sir, I thank you, my brother. I know, uh, but I, I can't come. There's one lady, I don't know what her name is, uh, she may send it, uh, that she, she learned she had said, you know, she has surrounded the FCC with over 100 journalists, uh, you know, to come and embarrass him and intimidate him and all kind of stuff. I said, okay, if that is your fear, I'm going to pass you through my own gate, special man's gate. You will come to my floor. We will accord you that respect. I will invite my operator, operatives. They will come and interrogate you or in interview you in my own office. What could be more honorable than that? In my own office. To allay the fear. 
Ah, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You know what he said? Eh, but can't they come to my village? <laughs> Meanwhile, the embattled former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Belo, has described the ESCC statement that he was invited immediately after his tenure on January 27, 2024, as untrue. In a statement by his media aide, Belo challenged the ESCC to produce a copy of the invitation, including the delivery date, recipient's name, and endorsement. The former Kogi governor says before any alleged invitation, the EFCC amended his charge on February 5 last year to accuse him of conspiring to convert over 80 billion naira of Kogi state funds in September 2015. The statement said the amendment listed Yahya Bello as still at large, demonstrating a clear intention to arrest him. At the same time, the alleged timelines provided by the EACC for his allegations of crime against Yahya Bello predate his inauguration as governor of Kogi State on January 27, 2016. Joining us now on this show from our London studio as we look at the various legal angles to the face-off between the EACC and Yahya Bello is Daniel Boala, a lawyer. Good morning, Daniel Boala. Thank you for joining us on the morning show. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning, Mr. Rufai. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Daniel. Well, Daniel Abuala, I don't need to narrate the story to you again, I'm sure. As somebody who is in the public domain, you've been following the story. EFCC versus Yahya Bello. And then the uh, media briefing yesterday by the EFCC chairman and the repost by uh, Yahya Bello's uh, media office and all the issues uh, associated thereby, including invitation, warrant of arrest, and the case in court so far, with Adedipe SEN saying that indeed, you know, his uh, candidate, uh, his uh, client uh, was not, uh, in fact, at any point invited. Does a phone call by the ESCC chairman amount to an invitation? All of those issues. Your take. Well, uh, good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. Abati, just when you thought that the drama on the day they went to arrest him was enough embarrassment, you had another one again yesterday. What happened yesterday was like a prosecutor in court doing his opening address in the view of prosecuting the matter. And who is the judge? In yesterday, it was the pressman. That same privilege Yaebele does not have to also state his own case so we can call it a complete trial by the media. This is one of the many reasons why people tend to ask the question, is the commission actually intending to prosecute or the commission is indirectly giving opportunity for the accused to escape? Because this same thing is like it has always been playing in EFCC's approach to prosecution, which has led to so many high-profile cases going out of hand. Like, for example, if you give a forensic analysis of what he said in the press yesterday, a, a right-thinking member of the society will say this was a planned script to give Yayabelo an escape route. Why did I say that? One, the trial in Nigeria is a trial not by jury. Even trial by jury is not a trial by the media. Two, having submitted a charge to court with the evidence that he has been granted order of substitution and he has, sub and he has served Yaebelo through his counsel, he has submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. Was there any need to hold a meeting and begin to argue the substance of the charge? Three, some of the things he said yesterday has created more doubt and fed into the allegation of Yabello that he will not seek justice because it was a persecution. Otherwise, let me tell you one or two things, uh, Mr. Abati. One in the press yesterday, he said he accorded a special privilege and respect to Yabello. That same privilege was not given Boboriski. That same privilege was not given others that he called him. The procedure in EFCC is, except if they change it, they will write you. 
that's why there will be that evidence that you were invited because it falls on the fulcrum of the commencement of a trial that the accused must have been invited for investigation he even said yesterday that we don't need to even take his statement in order to charge him that means you've already done what you needed to do so why is the insistence to arrest him and then when you open your mouth before the press to tell them that you said okay you come through the bag i'll ensure you come to my office then the operators will come to my office the investigators and then they will investigate you are trying to say that as chairman you can breach protocol and procedure that you set does everybody that you invite in that commission get the same privilege now is the is the very concept of everybody is equal before the law and nobody is above the law applied three he now went ahead to talk about the substance in the chat sheet so what was he actually trying to achieve he wants to convict yayabello before the media so that if the substance of the charge eventually fails the media can then build a narrative that the judge was bribed or that nobody wants EFCC to succeed. There is no country of the world where you take that path, you end up succeeding. The energy can only be challenged in one direction. Unfortunately, EFCC chose to do it through the media rather than in court. You have even seen the one of Adoki. When they went to court, after they charged him, they said, we don't have any evidence against him. Now, uh, Adoki can go to court, civil court now and file an action against them for malicious prosecution. Then the question that I beg for answer is, when will EFCC actually commence criminal trial with the sole purpose of getting the defendant convicted? All right, all right. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Bwala. And uh, what, like, from how you opened, then I just had to go and check again the qualifications and experience of Mr. Um, you know, the EFCC chairman, Olukoyedi, and he's you cannot say that he's inexperienced. You cannot say that he wouldn't or shouldn't know the things that you're presented. He's been working not just as a lawyer, but also with EFCC since 2016 in different capacities. So he has seen a number of these cases, so he must understand the protocols of what has happened. Now, following yesterday's um, you know, press briefing, Mr. Yahaya Bello has also released his own statement. It's curious that a man who's wanted still has a media aide who is issuing statements on his behalf. But what do you make of that statement in terms of, um, um, you know, the, the merit of it, the meat of it, and also the fact that he's still, you know, uh, he's still at large. He hasn't yet presented himself to come in. And what strength does he have with regards to his saying that he has a he has a um, high, Kogi High Court um, statement to withhold him or withhold them from persecuting or charging or arresting him? What do you make of that? Ayo, let us talk law strictly here, not emotions, not politics. The prosecution. Now, yesterday what he did and everything he said has no consequential effect in the court of law even if the media go out and conclude that the ayabelo has committed those crimes he knows that in criminal trial the prosecution has the burden of proof to prove the element of the offenses in the charge and the standard of proof is beyond reasonable doubt and what you need to establish that are cogent and compelling evidence all of these things are to be done in the courtroom that's case number one. Number two, you talk about experience. That is the very reason why people can conclude that he actually does not want to prosecute the Ayabello. Why? Because if you go by experience, what he did yesterday, he has given materials to Ayabello to use against him in the court of law. And we don't even want to bring the politics of it. The Ayabello can come out and say, since he has called me personally, then I want to tell the world that he also actually asked me for money. Because that's what Metawali said about uh, 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 Abdel Rashid Bawa. He said Abdel Rashid Bawa asking for money. It's because of those you know, privileges granted to the defendant or the suspect. Now, because of what is the standard and the burden of proof in the court of law, Look at what trans look at the facts that have changed in respect of the matter. All of them now appeared in court where the prosecution, the prosecution counsel told the court that he needed the accused in the court to be arraigned. The defendant told the court that, my lord, since you have even given them an order to serve the defendant by substitution, and now we have been served, 
then we are praying that you should invalidate the order to arrest Yabelo because this service further proves that Yabelo now has the knowledge. All we need is for Yabelo to appear. The prosecutor said, no, my lord, because it's a criminal trial, he must be here in person. And the court now adjourned the matter for ruling on this argument to the, uh, sometime in May. The import of what transpired in court based on these facts now is that it is superfluous for EFCC to be looking for Yabello. EFCC is just to wait and come that day to hear the ruling. If the ruling invalidates the, the uh, arrest warrant, then fine. If it does not, then the Yabello on that day in any case will appear before the court and now be arraigned before the court. Now, what it means is that any day after that yesterday or two days ago, any effort by EFCC to attempt to arrest the IAB law now amount to violating the due process of law where parties have submitted to the jurisdiction of the court. You have to allow the court to run proceedings and you cannot run the proceedings for the court. And these are matters of law. These are matters that at least new entrants in the legal department of EFCC ought to know. So the, the, the question now is, what is EFCC trying to achieve? I get a good example, Ayo. Yaebelo has an order that has not been set aside. The order says that he should not be arrested, he should not be prosecuted. The EFCC does not believe that that order should be sustained. EFCC challenged that order. That challenge has not been determined by court. Now, attempting to arrest him when that has not been determined, please help me ask students of Nigerian Law School, what is the interpretation of that in the court of law? Two, they also have another co uh, order to arrest him. And that order to arrest him has now been brought before a court in which counter-argument was made and court adjourned for ruling. What is the input of that? So you have coalition of judicial voices and these courts that have given the various orders are courts of coordinate jurisdiction which each other's decision does not bind the other so we are not even going into the administration of the federal high court as to how do you deal with this kind of conflicting order all these orders are valid and subsisting until they are set aside but you see all of them have been overtaken by event because before this court it has been adjourned for ruling okay uh Daniel Bwala, a couple of things we'd like to clear. See, number one, we know the EFC yeah. has its own high-handedness and might not have done things right with all of what is happening. I know you are here to talk a lot this morning, but we also need to talk media and political implications this morning. This, the EFCC did, was a reaction to the barrage of defense mechanism put on by the IAPLO campaign the last one week, which we all know that is going on which we all know because we see what's happening in the media space and i'm not a child in this media game the first question i would like to ask is wasn't yaya's bill supposed to tender himself in the first place to be able to answer all of this you talk about privileges we act like people are not being given privileges in this country is it today now today we start this high and mighty call at the back it's not today so let's be realistic we talk like people are not being grieving. Wasn't he supposed to tender himself in the first place to the EFC to be able to answer all of these allegations leveled against him? Even if he has a case, then you go to court. Secondly, let's talk about this judicial head knock at each other. Two court of competent jurisdiction going head at head with each other. The federal high court said something. Another state high court said something. When are we going to get out of this? When are we going to get out of this? Because we all saw the protest yesterday too in Kogi State. We all saw the civil society organization. I mean, Mr. Buala, I know this game now. And you know I know this game. But I know what the reaction is. I'm not saying the reaction of ESG was correct. I'm not saying it was correct because I haven't talked about contempt of court this morning. What would you have to say about this? Right. You know, Mr. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Rufai, you know, this is why uh, people will say EFCC in this case was beaten at its own game. Because Definitely. EFCC is fond of using the media against the people. So now defendants have also learned how to use the media to counter them. This is what is happening. But aside from these... Uh, things that have not to, nothing to do with strict interpretation of the law. Because if you go that route, everybody will keep digging deep into it. But what is the provision of the law regarding the circumstances you talked about? One, the Constitution says anybody 
who feels his right is violated is about to be violated. That is, you just think that your right is about to be violated. He said the person can approach the court to seek the protection of his fundamental right. Now, that about to be violated is subject to circumstances, factual affidavit evidence, which the court will look at. EFCC provided the material for him to do that. Through this, there are various media hints, media leaking, and media information. Look at the uh, Hadith Rika. Between yesterday, they say they arrest him to today. Maybe 75% of everything about Hadika has been known. Do you think Hadika, Hadika will sleep in his bed because he's donating himself to EFC? He will want to go and enforce his right. You don't see that in America or in, any, in Metropolitan Police in London. In fact, you will not know when investigation would have been concluded, court has been approached, order has been gotten against you. Before you think of going to court, it is too late but when you keep leaking to the media this what you because you want the media to know you are doing great you have created the facts of his right that is about to be violated and i have not yet seen a defendant who will see opportunity like that i will not take advantage so of see, it that is shot themselves in the foot Number in this two, case they have they have always been doing that mr abati that uh, mr rufai that's why the question that begs for answer is do they really want to prosecute the person because they do that only to high profile cases and in 90 percent of these cases the case will now go to the oblivion we have seen fire matter we have seen benga daniel's matter we have seen aduke's matter we have seen all of the matters in which there was a drama skit before the actual trial the defendants are free in the society but those ones like the yahoo boys and the people mutilating the naira before you know they have already concluded everything on them then you see conviction without even a trial because they have put so much of fear to the people that the people say they have admitted to the guilt the question continues to be asked by the nigerian people are you doing are you actually intending to prosecute in the media or intending to prosecute in the court because if you look at adoke's case when they had to come back after almost five years to say we don't have any evidence to prosecute him so what were you doing in the five years do you know how the man was arrested it was a gestapo oppression outside of the shores of nigeria to tell you the seriousness as if they were going for a bucket shakao how could you have gone this far and then come to court after five years and say we don't have any evidence to so people think that there is more of this media than the actual trial because one you talked about conflicting courts of uh, coordinate judicial given order for more than eight years close to 10 years i was one of the fewest persons that started this cry that there should be a docket there should be an administration of case management in federal high court and all courts in nigeria where if i come before you uh, rufai to raise any matter and there is a substantive order in respect of the matter system will prompt the judge it will prompt you and you will say mr Bola, there is a this is and this before a court but that is done and the, the judge if no facts exist before him that there was an order elsewhere he will continue to act as if he has not seen it because even if the court sees while driving to the court somebody drives and hits somebody with a car and the person die if you don't bring it the matter before him he is precluded by law from bringing his observation into the matter because doing so would mean he has descended into the arena still the question must be asked does efcc want to prosecute or the efcc is playing with the sensibility of nigeria well, if you want to prosecute let well, me tell you mr rufai you will not be dragged by the drama you will be focused on the substance of your matter well i mean the drama is unfolding i guess we've not seen the end of it now yesterday the court gave an order for substituted service through uh yaya Bello's uh, council at uh, adiola adedipe sn right and adiola adedipe sn was saying categorically before the court that there was no order for arrest or you know any invitation before the assault, the invasion of Yahya Bello's house and the uh, declaration of a warrant of arrest. And he wanted that warrant of arrest vacated uh, before his client could appear before the court. What do you think we're likely to see next in this drama? To go to the, you know, the arena of the court, which is the proper place uh, for the matter to be heard, not in the media. What do you think we're likely to see next? Right. So, so based, Mr. Abati, based on what transpired in court, there are two facts to be gleaned without delving 
to the strength or otherwise of the matter because that part is subjudice. Now, the two facts to be gleaned is that there is an order for arrest that has now been contested before a judge for which it has been adjourned for ruling. EFCC is not supposed after today to be chasing Yaya Bello anywhere, even if he's working in front of their head office. They are not supposed to arrest him because now it has been contested before a court and court has adjourned for ruling. Two, there is a, the, an application by Yaya Bello that that order of arrest should be stepped down because it has been overtaken by event since I have now been served. And on the next adjourned date, it is only when I don't show up that the court can be requested to issue a bench warrant. But now, having served me, the law requires for me to study the charges ahead of my arraignment. And so arresting me will amount to breaching on my right to prepare and come and take my plea. So, and that, that request that that order of arrest should be invalidated has not been granted or refused because it has been adjourned for ruling. Where these two facts exist, the way we know it, we teach students in law school, is that party must maintain status quo pending the hearing of the various applications and objections so that court will decide. Even on that day, the court says, your request to set aside this order of arrest has now been overtaken by event because you are already before me. Then fine. If the court says on that day you are not before me, so that means this order to arrest will have to be extended. Even if you throw, throw away, there will naturally be a request that a bench warrant be issued since you have not appeared for your arrest. If the court set it aside, then you proceed to trial. What it means is that the two sides of the coin, whichever way you flip it, it maintains the value of the coin. If the coin is 10 naira, irrespective of the two sides of the coin, the coin remains 10 naira, I mean 10 kobo. Now, if the coin's value changes from 10 kobo to 5 kobo, then you begin to look at the distinctive characteristics of each of the two sides of the coin. So this is where we are now. And I don't want to talk about whether this application will succeed or it will fail because that is left for the court to decide. Right, yeah. But what we know is that where parties have submitted themselves to the jurisdiction of the court, parties are to maintain status quo pending on the direction of the court. So if the EFCC continue to be chasing him up and down, it will now feed into the narrative that EFCC is all about media and drama than the actual prosecution because you have now found that your charge has been served on him. What are you supposed to do as prosecution? You are supposed to then prepare. On that day after arraignment, you will now do your open address or request for a date for trial. This is the fact as they are. I just very quickly, um, one thing that away from, or still a part of the case, was that the FCC chairman, while speaking yesterday, also spoke about the fraud risk assessment and control department, um, looking at prevention. That the fact is that if we don't, if the, if the system, we, if we don't have an upgrade of the system, we'll continue to have the likes of cases of the Yahaya Bellows, the Hadi Sirikas, the other governors that have come for, have come under investigation. How can we begin to strengthen? I'm sure there are already procedures and processes, systems in place, but implementation is the challenge. What would you, what do you have to say about that? Because this is a bigger issue beyond the higher bellow. We want to see systems that are strengthened and not hear stories that would make, make the mind boggle. What's your take on this? So I look at it this way. This now takes us away from the legality or otherwise of a case to administration which is matters outside of the legality or otherwise and the administration of F uh, efcc i don't think at this stage anybody in nigeria should have a doubt that efcc needs a reform why do i say that the media interview he did yesterday he shot himself with so many types of bullets by clearly showing to the world that it's a disproportionate application of their principles. I told you the first one, which is that one is saying, you come to my office through the back door and then I'll get people to come and interview you, which nobody gets that. And the law is that everybody is equal before the law and nobody is above the law. That's one. Two, you have seen the zeal with which he must be arrested. Now, if you ask somebody, they will say, but there are other similar cases before you for which you have even given a preliminary report of indictment, but you have not arrested the person. A good example, for example, the lady that was suspended for humanitarian. Is there any drama around she will be arrested, she will be done? Yesterday, he was even saying that it is not even about her. 
we are investigating the entire system. So in one breath, you are about personality. In another breath, you say it's not about personality. You can take that administration even to the issue of the abuse of Naira. You did not issue a clear, clearly defined statement that the man in the street and the man in the bush will understand. That from today as EFCC, we are issuing warning. Any Nigerian that is seen abusing the Naira will be prosecuted. So that if you do that, you can then hold people accountable. But you went and retroactively arrested others. Now people are asking, since that last two people that you started proceedings against them, why are you not touching others? Our videos are imagined left, right, and center. So there is need for a reform in EFCC. There is no doubt about that. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For more exciting videos, I can't wait to see you back here again.